Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. For two months now we have been discussing black body radiation and Kirchhoff's law and have finally reached the last presentation. It is my hope that you will take the time to master these talks as they are critical to many aspects of science from MRI to astrophysics. I tried to provide you with a step-by-step -step guide to the problems surrounding Kirchhoff's law. Perhaps it is hard to understand why I care so much about this law, but cavity radiation involves so many things around us it is hard not to care. It touches everything from condensed matter physics to our current understanding of the stars and the universe itself. My own personal journey into the study of thermal radiation started with the development of ultra-high field MRI. Many aspects of this journey are difficult to explain on Sky Scholar, but there is one aspect that I hope you can all appreciate. The first ultra-high field MRI coils acted as resonant cavities. An example of such a coil was a completely enclosed cavity as shown in this figure. This coil was resonant, not black. It acted as a nearly perfectly reflecting cavity and the radiation which it contained had nothing to do with the temperature of its walls. In fact, if Kirchhoff had been correct, UHF MRI would never have worked as any radiation incident into a cavity would have been destined to become black. You can learn more about all this in a paper which is linked below. On a practical level for each of us, let's think about our cell phones. Cell phones function with the use of cell tower relay antennas as shown here. Those relay antennas are cavities and thankfully the radiation they contain is not black and also has nothing to do with the temperature of their walls. In addition, laser technology depends on the use of resonant cavities in order to build up phase coherent light. If Kirchhoff was right, then lasers would not exist. Yet they are everywhere in modern society. It is clear that perfectly reflecting cavities contain radiation which is absolutely independent of their temperature. This is not so small a point and it needs to be driven home to the scientific community. It is not a question of thermal equilibrium for these cavities because the temperature of their walls does not govern their radiation. That radiation belongs to the surroundings and that is why it is undefined. Kirchhoff's formulation involved division by zero which was also undefined for the perfect reflector as we saw in this video. This was telling us something important and physics simply cannot ignore that mathematical clue. So why did the scientific community ignore it? I guess the prize was too great. Imagine, now we had universal constants and they were limiting units of mass, length, time and temperature. These units are used at a fundamental level in physics and astronomy. But if Kirchhoff's law is false, then they have no special meaning at all. It is an enormous blow to much of the physical sciences. The collapse of Kirchhoff's law also brings into question many aspects of statistical physics. I hope that all of you will continue to learn these lessons and perhaps even defend the findings. Relative to Kirchhoff's law, you already know the key points. Black bodies can do work and they are made from nearly perfect absorbers. The radiation they contain absolutely is dependent both on their temperature and on the nature of their walls. Conversely, rigid, perfectly reflecting cavities cannot do work they contain the radiation present in their surroundings and that radiation has nothing to do with the temperature of their walls. That is why the radiation they contain is not a question of thermal equilibrium. That is also why if the radiation which is incident upon a perfectly reflecting cavity is coherent and the cavity has the proper dimensions, resonant conditions are met and we get standing waves. That being said, Planck's equation appears to remain valid for actual black bodies. Consequently, physics does get to keep the quantum of action and Boltzmann's constant. But again, there is a need to reconsider some aspects of thermodynamics. In short, 
Just because you have a thermal spectrum, that does not mean that you get to extract from it the correct temperature of its source. This significantly affects the sun, the stars, and the universe. The challenges involved have to do with the physics behind thermal emission in liquids, as you will soon discover. The sun and the stars contain energy in convection currents, and this energy cannot be ignored. Thus, as we continue this series, you will learn how the collapse of Kirchhoff's law affects our knowledge of the sun and the stars. It is only by invoking condensed matter that we can bring a proper understanding to astronomy. That includes the true origin of the microwave background and the actual temperature of the solar surface. Again, both problems are related to the thermal nature of liquids, something that physics has overlooked. Perhaps the greatest problem with the existence of Kirchhoff's law has been that Planck's equation remains unlinked to the physical world. I have spoken about this before both in my talks and in my papers. Planck's equation is the only equation in physics which describes the emission of light where the nature of the emitter has never been defined, and this is because of Kirchhoff's law. Physics remains unable to tell the average person why a piece of graphite emits a photon since according to Kirchhoff, the radiation must be independent of the nature of the walls. This is nonsense of course. Graphite must use its lattice to emit a photon. I first made the point in 2003 in this paper. Since the solar photosphere emits a thermal spectrum, it must also have a lattice much like graphite. In addition, that is why the Big Bang could never have produced the monopole of the microwave background. The primordial explosion did not have access to a vibrational lattice. The lessons from graphite just cannot be ignored. In closing, I hope that you enjoyed learning about Kirchhoff's law in this series of videos. As you will come to discover, you are being equipped to properly understand what is taking place in both the physical sciences and in astronomy. It is my hope that you will continue to support me through your views and likes. So leave a like and subscribe, promote the channel if you can, and stick with me as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.